Well, I thought I'd do a little video explaining what ternates are because I get a lot, asked a lot about these snakes. Um, and every the main question is people want to know what kind of morph is a ternate? Well, it's not a morph. That's, uh, that's the main thing that uh, I seem to have to keep explaining to people. Um, I know people. I know that people would naturally think they're morph because of how much different they look than a lot of the other things they're seeing. I think I can get some more light in here. Um, so, ternate. It's actually ternate. I'm just too lazy to enunciate the, an extra syllable, so I just call them ternates for short. Um, it's Ternate Island in Indonesia. It's, it's a little over 40 square miles uh, off the west coast of Halmahara Island, which is significantly larger. I believe it is almost, it's, it's over 6,000 square miles, Halmahara is, if I remember correctly. It's uh, like 6,700 and some. So Ternate is noticeably smaller at only um, like 46 or 43 square miles. And it's basically uh, just a giant volcano. Uh, it's actually a little bit, the highest out, uh, elevation on that is, uh, it's over 5,000 feet. Uh, and it's just a little bit higher than uh, uh, Halmahara. So it's, that's what these, uh, that's where they come from. They're not a morph. Um, and they are, uh, I consider these to be a dwarf. They don't, mine aren't big. I have 11 wild caught adults uh, 5.6 my largest is right around 12 feet uh, the smallest I finally got up over 8 feet which has taken forever and uh, they lay extremely large eggs roughly 200 grams give or take the average weight on these guys with the exception of clutch 7 the one that this one's from because I got too much water in there they actually hatched out on average about 10 to 15 grams heavier uh, this clutch was all in the high 120 to low 130 gram, but uh, typically they're between like 100 and 125 grams when they hatch out. So, but like I said, this is from the seventh clutch, which was wild caught male three to wild caught male or wild caught female five. And uh, I specifically did this breeding to create some lighter colors. Is I really like dark retics, but. Uh, if I want to make nice sunfires or something like that with this, I needed some more yellows and orange. So I specifically did this, did that breeding to create this look. And uh, it worked. It actually came out much better than I thought. So, but uh, yeah, they're really interesting snakes. And uh, I'm really happy to be able to be working with them. Let me pull out one from another clutch. Here is a male from Clutch 6, which this is pretty much my favorite look. Dark, thick black, jagged edges. Um, I could lie and tell people these are marbles, or pretty much I could just tell them it's a new morph and they would have no idea, no way of knowing because these literally look so much different than uh, everything else out there. And uh, this was the product of wild caught male five to wild caught female four. And uh, so far, this is probably every just about every clutch I hatch out. I, the next clutch I say is my favorite, but uh, this this is definitely definitely up there. Uh, I, I just love the uh, jagged edges with the uh, dots uh, in in the back diamonds. I really like that look. That's a, that's a pretty typical look for stuff in northern Maluku's, well, kind of typical, northern Maluku's and up into the Philippines. And, uh, but you have to selectively breed for this. This was, uh, like I said, this was clutch six. And I think I can, I think I have it figured out on how to do this um, and really create the look I want. Uh, it's taken seven, seven pure clutches, but um, usually when you breed two retics that look alike together, you get more of those looking animals where in ternates if you breed two ternates that look alike you seem to get like an extreme example extreme version almost of the 
two similar looking adults. So if you want to create a certain look, you basically, if you breed two dark turn dice together, you get really dark babies, typically darker from what I've seen than the adults. So um, you almost have to, if you want to kind of create a certain look or a certain pattern, you almost have to take two n not so similar looking animals and put them together. And uh, that's kind of what I did here, and that's definitely what I did on Clutch 7 to create the uh, higher yellows and oranges. So, uh, but I'm looking forward to getting these into uh, other other morphs as of right now. I only have them in Platinum and Jaguar, and they are made the nicest looking Jags out there and the nicest looking Platinums out there. So, uh, I really... I, a bold statement I would I, th I think it's safe to make is I, I wouldn't go I kind of want to say these are the future of retics but I don't know do retics really have a future um, I, I think I can make that statement and justified by the fact that in just two seasons I've taken this locality and turned it into the most sustainable uh, locality retic to continue captive reproduction of. Uh, there's no other breeder out there that has a quantity of a locality that I have and has reproduced it. Uh, you know, we're talking seven F1s from nine different adults, nine wild caught adults. So that allows me to do a massive amount of, uh, of breedings. Um, just before, just if I was to only make F1s with turn aids at five point. Um, 5.6. So I have one female I have an issue with, so I'm not. I'm just. I won't even count her because she, she's. She doesn't like to reproduce. But the other five are golden. So uh, if I was to just take and just make F ones with say 5.5 of my adults, that would that would mean I could produce 25 F one clutches of unrelated animals before I had to repeat a wild caught to wild caught breeding. That's each female could be bred to each male. That's I got five males, five females, so that's 25. Uh, so if anybody was wanted to get into, uh, you know, a specific locality, and wanted 3.3 F1s from three different wildcat breedings, as of right now, I'm the only retic breeder I know of that can actually offer something like that, and it's with these turnates because there's just not that many bloodlines out there. So I, I do think it's safe to say that if retics, if there was ever, if there was one specific locality that was going to kind of take over, it's, it's, this, it's this locality here. It, they look, as you can see, they look like a thousand times better than pretty much any other retic out there. They're not much bigger than super dwarfs. They're basically jam size or solaire size. Uh, they lay really, small clutches to that are large uh, egg size and there is enough of them I own enough of them to produce them in a manner to not have to resort to inbreeding so I, I do consider these the future of uh, locality and locality crosses as much as, as as good of an investment as super doors are they still have the egg bound issue they don't touch the pattern or color of a turnate that like there's well there's really nothing out there that can really touch this maybe like an insanely nice uh Sulawesi or something like that but for for this kind of pattern for this kind of uh and in this size you know the adults on this snake uh the male was he's about six and a half maybe seven the females eight eight feet and uh i've been pounding her with food all year i'm trying to get her up to nine I'm um, trying to make my females as big as possible because of those giant giant eggs they lay, but uh, he's gonna he's gonna bite me. So I am going to show another one from Clutch Five. It's another look that I really like: darker, thicker black, slightly more rounded back pattern though. This this one's a little thicker black, not quite the same back pattern. Um, slightly better side coloring, which it's really tough so far to get a sharp back pattern and uh, the higher contrast on the sides. 
that connect the whole way down to the stomach. Like, see how wide that is. So I'm working on that. I have one female that does have a lot of side pattern and very sharp back diamonds, uh, but she's thin black. She's uh, she's about one scale thick on on average. So I'm gonna have to cross her into a into a male that's got thicker black, and uh, I'll use the sharpest back pattern male I have. Uh, she's also got a lot of red, so um, it's it's gonna be a little tougher to to create that elongated uh, side pattern that uh, touches the belly like that. But uh, a couple breedings, and I should be able to do it. But this is a this is a look I really like. And uh, I'll probably, the female that produced this was female six, the male was, um, it was a male, male four. I will probably be running her to my endocarmal tiger. I'd really like to get uh, these traits into the endocarmal gene. I, I personally, I think that's the finest of the T positives. It's the most reliable and has the best overall color. And sooner or later, people are going to get sick of the... Uh, the orange glow mochino stuff when it comes to making hats because you're you're just always rolling the dice and uh, I know people like the mochinos personally I don't I don't care for the mochas I don't uh, I think they're too dark I don't think they look enough like an albino but uh, I think this will be a great locality for uh, locality option for the endocarmal with the smaller size the amount of side color and the amount of black so. Uh, yeah, I'll have to do a video on the morph crosses that I have so far. But yeah, her black, I'm trying to make it where, I'm trying to make a turn eight that has connecting black that connects uh, into the black at the bottom of the white, that surrounds the white and that connects the whole way down. And this one almost has it. Uh, I did make one male that basically has it the length of the body but I believe he's in a shed right now so I'm not going to show him so yeah I want to put his, his I want to thicken up the black as much as possible uh, on endocarmals plus downsize them at the same time so they get a super high contrast